only works on Mishnayas. <laughs> Pirates is in Minneapolis. All oh, right, it's the middle. Uh... Um, yeah. That's right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So talk to talk to Gemara. Uh, on pay Aleph on the base, about three, six, six lines up from the bottom. A par parrot, I'm sure, doesn't care. But your your nephew Moshe Dive was very excited. I told him that a from family owns the Vikings. He was very. Right. Is that a from family? Yeah, Wolf. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess that's. Uh, does he think that he's going to get tickets to a game? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess he's a step closer to getting tickets to a game than me. So I guess, I guess, uh, <laughs> no, no loss there. All right. Let's see. So talking about how all the mashkin shemer So we said. That if you lend somebody, where are you, where are you starting? I'm sorry. Uh, um, pay Aleph on the base, about seven lines up from the bottom. Two dots, two dots, two dots. Yeah. Avail a mashkin shema So if you if you lend somebody on a mashkin, meaning your guy lends money, and the fellow gives him his watch to what to to hold on to. So now what what is his responsibility? What's his responsibility to this watch? Is he a shemachin or is he a shema socher? I would get the difference between a Shemachin and a Shemachin. A Shemachin is going to be putter on everything unless he's a Peshe, unless he's negligent. If he's a Shemachin, then the only thing he is putter from is, is a Oynes, if it's, if it's out, out of beyond his control. Everything else, everything else, he's going to be Chaya for, even Geneva and Aveda. So the Mishnah, the Gemara says, let's say a Mishnah is not like Rebbe Yezid, the Tanya, Amalvis Chaveri Alamashkin. If somebody lends his friend on a mashkin, but over a mashkin, and now the lender loses the mashkin, Yishava. So, what does he do? He swears, I meaning he swears that he wasn't a Peshea, but you told my and then he can get his regular money, right? Because he was a he was uh, um, he's a Shamachinum, so he swears that he wasn't a Peshea, and that's it. He could say to him, Klum Hilvisani El Alamashkin, you lent me money. Because I gave you the mashkin, of a mashkin, of you lost the mashkin. Now I'm not paying you back, right? So, meaning from it sounds like according to Rabbi Kiva, the mashkin represents the loan, right? So if he loses the mashkin, meaning this, the, the, the essentially the shaila is is what is how does a mashkin work? Does a mashkin represent the actual loan? If you lose the mashkin, that was your payment. Or do we say, no, the mashkin is not the loan. The mashkin is an independent thing that's supposed to keep the lender honest to make sure that he returns the loan. But there is no direct connection between the mashkin and the loan. Right? So that's, that's the mashkin. So, so Rabbi Eliezer says there's no connection. And Rabbi Kiva says there is a connection. At least that's what it seems right now. But if he lent somebody a thousand zuz, and it was a star that says so. There was an IOU. And he put down a mashkin. And according to everybody, if the mashkin gets lost, then he then he uh, then uh, he loses. Right? Because why? Because um, a star makes it into a real um Meaning, if, if when you have a star, he's not worried about the the guy denying the loan because you have a star for that, right? So, what did he give him a mashkin? Meaning, why do you need a mashkin and a star? If you don't have a star, so you give him a mashkin, so the, the malva makes sure he gets paid back. But if you already have a star, so then the the star will make it that he'll get paid back. So, why do you need a mashkin also for? So, it must be that the mashkin was there to represent the, the money. Right. Um, uh, fine. Is this only when the mashkin is the exact value of the money borrowed? So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that in a, in a few lines. Um, anyway.
that's so that so that so the Gemara is saying, let's say that our, our mission is not like Rebbe Liazza, right? Because our mission says that he's a Shamer Sacha, and Rebbe Liazza says the Shamer Chino. The Gemara answers, I feel you could even say that the mission is like Rebbe Liazza, but like Kasha, Kansha Mashkin of Bashas Halva Asai. One is talking about where the Mashkin happened at the t- same time as the Halva. And one is talking about where the mashkin happened not during the time of the loan. Right? Meaning when Rileza says that um when Rileza says that he still he the losing the mashkin doesn't mean anything. So then that's only when uh when it was taken when the mashkin was taken at the same time of the loan. But if it was taken after the loan, right, then um, right, but it was taken after the loan, then it's for sure considered like payment. Right, that's how we're trying to be mechalic. Sigmar asks if that's the case. Well, Edi be Edi, I'm talking about Aleph now. Halveyo alamashkin katani. Right, it says that he would he borrowed on a mashkin, meaning the lushan sounds like the loan happened with with the mashkin. Right, Ella. So then, so then we're going to change pshat. Like Kasha can't show veil mice, can't show veil payers. One is talking about where he lent the money. Where Rabbi Yezer says that he's considered a shaymechinam, that's where he would lend money because there's nothing in it to him. He lent the guy money, right? So what what gain is he getting from that? He's just being a nice guy. So if the guy gave him a mashkin, so then he's uh, um, he's just a shaymechinam. But when he lends out Paris, then he's going to gain from it. Why? Because he lent him Paris. Now, if he didn't, if he didn't lend him these Paris, these Paris are going to rot. So it didn't. So he's going to get back. Let's say he lent him the Paris for a week. He's going to get back the Paris. Those Paris are going to be fresh Paris. So there's something in it for him. So therefore, he is considered a Shimer Socha. Again, the same rule applies. That we sort of saw, saw last night, which is that when there's something to be gained by the lender, then he's going to be a shamer sacher because if he's getting paid. But the Gemara asks, "When the Gatani say for Rabbi Yehuda, I'm Rabbi Omai, shamer chinam, Rabbi Omai, shamer sacher." In the Sefer, Rabbi Yehuda differentiates between shamer chinam and, and uh, between Paris and money. Mechlab de la Tanakama leishanilin. That means according to the Tanakama, we don't differentiate. All right, meaning. We just said that the pshat and the tanakama that it's not that so doesn't so it it doesn't necessarily mean that the mission is going against Rabbi Yezer. One is talking about money. One is talking about Paris. But the only problem is that the safe of the Mishnah brings a shita that that says there's a difference between Paris and money. That's mashma. That the ratio of the Mishnah that we're trying to explain now does differentiate. It says Kula Rabbi Yehudi. It's all Rabbi Yehudi. There's something missing, and this is what I have to say. If he lent him on a mashkin, he's a shamer sacher. But that he's only a shamer sacher when he lent him fruit, because like there's something to be gained by him getting back the fruit, because he's going to get back fresher fruit. But if he lends money, he's a shamer chinam. If he lent him money, he's a shamer chinam. If he lent him Paris, he's a shamer sacher. So Gemara says that can't be either. Ihachi, Kamala Masnisin, the letter Kira Bekiva. If that's the case, now we get a little history lesson with this Kasha, right? If that's the case, then our Mishnah is not like Rabbi Kiva. Because again, Rabbi Yez and Rabbi Kiva are the ones having a machlaikis, whether if a mashkin gets lost, is, is the malva. Is the Malva not going to get his money back for the loan? The Vakiva said that he doesn't get paid back his loan because because um, we look at the Mashkin as if it represents the actual money of the loan. So if that's the case, our Mishnah is not like Rav Akiva. And what's wrong with the Mishnah is not Rav Akiva? Yeah. So if you look in Rashi, Rashi in the second Rashi, uh, second line down, Rashi says this is just a history lesson. So it's Kedai. and also it's uh, Rabbi Kiva is uh, this week, right? So the Ketani Avalim Hoveo Mois Shemechinam. 
Right? But in the, the Mishnah saying if he lent him money, he's a Shamachinam, Vanan Kaimala Musaf the Sanhedrin, Bakulu Stami. Anytime you have a Stam Mishnah, it's Stam Mishnah's Rameir. That we saw yesterday's Dah. Stam Sifra Rabbi Yehuda. When it says a Sifra, that's referring to Rabbi Yehuda. Stam Sifri is Rab Shimon. But Bikulu, I'll leave it to Rabbi Kiva. Right? Meaning, even though we have to say Stam Mishnah's Rameir, what it means is Rameir. Going according to his Rebbe, Rebbe Kiva. And when we say a Stam Sefer is Rebbe Yehuda, it's Rebbe Yehuda going like Rebbe Kiva. And, it's, and they have Rebbe Shimon, and that's, and, uh, that's Rebbe Shimon Bayechai, that's also going according to, to Rebbe Kiva. Meaning, so these, oh, they all trace it back to Rebbe Kiva. Right? So, Mamela, if we know that Stam Mishnah is like Rameir, so this is a Stam Mishnah. So if a Stam Mishnah is like Rameir, that means it has to be like Rabbi Kiva. And now we just said that the Mishnah is not like Rabbi Kiva. The, the Mishnah is like Rabbi Eliezer. And Rabbi Eliezer is chaylik on Rabbi Kiva. We just said it's not a Stam Mishnah. It's a Rabbi Huda. What? We just answered. Kula Rabbi Huda. That's, it's like Rabbi Yehuda. It's Shita's Rabbi Yehuda, not... not so that's... Not, not, it doesn't say the Mishnah. The Mishnah doesn't say Rabbi Yehuda. Yeah, that's a hachik tani. We're changing the words of the Mishnah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. That this gets into our age-old debate when the Gemara does this: is it changing the Mishnah or is it just saying I understood it as the Mishnah is going according to Rabbi Yehuda. The whole Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda, right? In which case, the Stam part of the Mishnah is not like Rabbi Kiva. You're saying so, Mamela, the whole Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda, so it's not a Stam Mishnah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, the, I guess the Gemara is still saying that the Lamaisa, the first few lines in the Mishnah, are Stam. So, Mamela, that's considered like Stam. Even though the Chesurei Mechsura is saying that it's not Stam. Okay, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I mean, unless the Kasha is Stam, that, that Rabbi Yehuda has to hold like Rabbi Kiva because it's his Rabbi. Um, you mean Rabbi Yehuda also has to go like Rabbi Kiva? Uh, maybe that's the that's big, like we said in the the, the rule with Stam Mishnah uh, and Stam Sefer Rabbi Yehuda is because we call Rabbi Kiva because he holds like Rabbi Kiva. That's I want to say. When, uh, that's a, another thing I wasn't sure about. So we're saying when it's a Stam Mishnah like Rameir. And Stam Mishnah, Stam Sifra is Rabbi Yehuda, and Stam Sifri is Rabbi Shimon. They're all going according to Rabbi Kiva. So why don't we just say Stam Mishnah? Why don't we just say Stam Mishnah is like Rabbi Kiva? And Stam Sifra. And Stam. Why don't we just say Stam everything is like Rabbi Kiva? <laughs> right? well, I don't know if Rabbi Kiva ever said this Mishnah publicly. Rabbi Yehuda is the one who said it. Or Rabbi is the one who said it. Or Rabbi Shimon is the one who said it. But it's you know all Rabbi Rabbi Kiva. What? Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. I, okay. Yeah. It's not, each I, one of them were the Bikim and those things that Rabbi Kiva said. Rameya was a bucky in the Mishnah that Rabbi Kiva gave. Right, but only but Rameya only in Stam Mishnahs, but only in Stam Mishnahs they have to go like Rabbi Kiva. If it's not a Stam Mishnah, they don't have to go like Rabbi Kiva, I guess. Well, yeah, right. Machlech is Rameya Rabbi Uda. Obviously, one of them is not like Rabbi Kiva. Right. So then, what is it? So when it's a Stam Mishnah, they, they both tell Stam, you they're, they're, like, they're all they're saying Rabbi Kiva. They're both like they both hold they're like Rabbi Kiva. They're having a machloik is what Rabbi Kiva said. He said, "Yeah, Avada." That, that's a big. That's could a be. Sometimes the Gemara doesn't say that. Right. So what it's, if it doesn't say? It? That's a cloud I just made up. So <laughs> it's, it's a cloud. A, you like you like clothes, so it's a cloud, no. Rameir also argues the Mishnah is with Rabbi Kiva. It answers the question. That's for sure. Right. Um, 
Yeah. Um. Anyways, okay, whatever that, but that's the kasha. Essentially, the kasha is how can you say that our mission is going by Ked from Rebbe Kiva again through Remeir? It's a stam mission's Remeir, and that means it's stam mission's Remeir according to Rebbe Kiva, and now the mission is by Ked from Rebbe Kiva. Hello, Machvarta, Masnisan, like Rebbe Yezer. Let's go back to the original Teretz that the mission is not like Rebbe Yezer, right? I mean, and it would be like Rebbe Kiva. Okay, then the Gemara says Leima. So what's the machlekes? Lemon, but the loy shabi mashkin shir zuzi. This is what you were saying before, Geshen. Let's say if the mashkin is not worth the amount of the loan. Let's say it's a thousand dollar loan, and the mashkin was only worth five hundred dollars. But Shmuel come up again. They're having a machlekes, and Shmuel is then the Amar Shmuel. Hi man, the oisve alpha zuzi lechave. This guy who lent a thousand zuz to his friend, va'anach lekapa the magla ilavayu. And he gave him a a uh, a kata, or you call it a uh, a handle of a knife. That was the mashkin, which was not worth as much as the thousands of loan. Over kata the magla, if he loses the kata of the magla, the handle of the knife, or look at the sickle, right? Of the alpazuza, he loses his thousands of meaning. Shmuel is saying that even if the mashkin is no is not worth anywhere near the price of the loan, if he loses the mashkin, then he then that's it. That the loan he cannot collect on the loan. So you see that he holds that a mashkin is mami, mamish a representation of of the loan. I don't know, representation mamish. It yeah, I guess it represents the actual loan. So the machlokes is right. Rebbe Yezer and Bekiva. I mean the machlokes whether we hold of Shmuel. Right, so Rebbe Yezer would hold it's not considered a representation of the loan. It just it's just like instead of a star, it's just to it's just to give validity to the loan. And Rebbe Kiva would hold no. Right, so that's what we're saying that we're thinking now that that's the machlokes. So Gemara says even the Lashavi Mashkin Shir Zuzi the Kuliyama less than the Shmuel. Nobody holds a Shmuel. Right. Um, meaning according to Rebbe Yezer, Rashi says he wouldn't lose anything. And according to Rabbi Kiva, he would only lose connected the mashkin. Meaning, Rabbi Yezza would say you still got to pay back the thousand, using the case of the thousand. Rabbi Kiva would say, let's say the handle was worth two hundred bucks, so all he gets back, all the all he can collect on is eight hundred instead of instead of a thousand. But either way, nobody holds of that. He the, it takes away the entire loan. So what's the machla? It's the halach the shavi shir zuzi, right? But here we're talking about where it's worth. The mashkin was worth the same amount of money as the loan. But come if we give the Rabbi Yitzchak, having a machlok is in the sheet of Rabbi Yitzchak. The Amar Rabbi Yitzchak, minal the Baal Chayv shekoyin a mashkin. How do we know that a Baal Chayv is koyin a mashkin? Meaning he actually acquires the mashkin and he has ownership on it. And Remela, he's going to be chayiv if something happens to it. Right? Shenemar, it says uluchot tiyet zedaka. That it's going to be tzedakah for you. Meaning, this is talking about when you're when you're when you have the collateral. So the pasuk says that you should go to at night, give him his clothing. Let's say he gives you collateral of clothing. So at night, you give him back his clothing so he could sleep and comfortably, and then go back to him in the morning and take back the collateral. So it says, and that will be tzedakah for you. How could it be tzedakah for you if you don't own the collateral? Elamai, Rabbi Yitzchak has a dig in the pasuk. Then it must be that you own the collateral. So I mean, a kind of mashkin. If he's not kind of the mashkin, tzedakah minole. How do you know that it's tzedakah? Mikan the bal chayiv she kind of mashkin. So we see from this that the bal chayiv is kind of the mashkin, right? So therefore, and the machloek is between Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Eliezer. You can't be tzedakah if it's not yours. What if he's not be doing the righteous thing? Still, no. It means it's tzedakah. It's got to be yours in order to be tzedakah. So Rabbi Kiva, right? He holds like Rabbi Yitzchak that it's tzedakah, meaning it's yours. And if you lose the mashkin, so that's it, you're out. You can't collect on the loan. Rabbi Yitzchak says, no, you, you still can collect on the loan because you don't own it. Then the Gemara says, but Tizbro. You, you sell the mashkin? Well, we have that. It's the last part of the Mishnah. Wait till on the base. Yeah. So the Gemara says, but Tizbro, Amar Dama Rabbi Yitzchak and Mashkin Noy Shalai B'Shan Salvad. Rabbi Yitzchak only says this din if the mashkin happened, Shalai B'Shan Salvad, meaning they lent the money today. And then a week later, the guy gives him a mashkin, which then makes it sound like, oh, uh, 
The reason why the guy's giving me a mashkin now is because maybe he thinks he's not going to be able to pay back the loan. So therefore, he gives the mashkin. So therefore, the owner is kind of the mashkin. I'll mashkin of Bishas Havasa, me, Omar. But the Rabbi Yitzchak say is then, if he, if he gives the mashkin during the Shast alone, right? That he didn't say. And Rabbi, Ki, Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Kiva are talking about a mashkin that was the Shast alone, like we said in the top of the Amen, right? That's the Lashin of the mission. Ella, mashkin ashalei v'shas avasa, kulei alma, isu the Rabbi Yitzchak. If the mashkin was given not at the time of the loan, meaning it was given at a later date, then everybody holds of Rabbi Yitzchak. We're talking about where there was a mashkin during the time of the loan. And we're having a machlaikis. What is the status of somebody who's watching an Aveda? Meaning you, you found a lost object and you have it in your house. Are you a Shem Resach or a Shem Rechina? Right? One of the more fascinating opinions, I think, in, the, in the, all the bubbles here. The Itmar, Shomer Aveda, somebody who's watching an Aveda, Rabbi Omar Kishomer Chinam, he's a Shomer Chinam, and therefore he's Chai, he's Potter on everything except if he was a Peshea. And Rabbi Yosef Omar Kishomer Sacher is like a Shomer Sacher. Right, so what's Rabbi Yosef's din? We had this a couple of times. Why is he a Shomer Sacher? Where's he getting paid? You found a lost object, you bring it into your house. Where are you getting paid? So you're getting paid because since you're Isaac the Mitzvah, you're Potter Menah Mitzvah. So when a guy comes knocking on the door and says, can I have some tzedakah money? You can tell him, I'm sorry, I'm potter. I'm watching this guy's watch that I found in the street. Right? So therefore, I'm Isaac the Mitzvah and I'm potter. <laughs> well, okay, we, <coughs> we argued this one out, how exactly, how exactly that works. Right? But, but the point is, is that Rabbi Yosef is saying is that since you're getting, you are, you can gain financially by finding a lost object, because you will get out of doing other mitzvahs, or at least other mitzvahs that cost you money. So therefore, it's the Shemr Sacher. So now we're saying... So if we put down the guy's wallet to give, and he decided to, even though he's holding the wallet, he decided to give him a Shuluk money, and when he gave them a Shuluk money, a door gave, ran away with the wallet, so now he's Chayiv. He was an Isaac mitzvah. He was Isaac in a different mitzvah, but that's that's what a good bit Bad things happen to good people. That's another safe, and it's a he's, different safe. But correct, he's a peshe. Well, he's a peshe. He shouldn't have done it. His job right now was to watch this guy's wallet. He was not. His job was not to go give tzedakah. And yeah, I, I have no, I have no idea. I would think it sounds to me like you're 100 percent right. Right? It would maybe it would depend on if the moon is being covered by the clouds. It's all you know. I don't know. You know, in every little nuance, could, right? But. Uh, yeah, l'chayra. L'chayra, that would be his job is to watch the wallet. Anyway, the point is, is that it could save him money. Right? And then you could also get Ashkafa, what do you mean saved you money, but it lost you other mitzvahs? Right, what do you call that a gain? You lost more mitzvahs. Okay, I don't know. But anyways, so we're saying that that's the machlaikis, Rabbi Kiva and, Re, and Rabbi Leaz. Oh, it helps his son. He said, my tati couldn't help me with the homework because he watched this guy's wallet. So. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> or it didn't go to Minion. Right. That's the attack. Is going is... To, I don't know. It's not going to Minion. Well, may, how can you go to Minion? You have to... That we had above a comma, right? Can you leave it with your... It was above Matsya. I think it was above Matsya. It was a mafkid. And yeah, that mean can you leave it with your kids? Can you leave it with your wife? Is that called? Is that called? But that was that was a cousin. That wasn't an Aveda. Was it an Aveda? Cousin, cousin. Right, that was a cousin. Right, right. What are you saying? Why is a shemer sacher considered doing a mitzvah? Being a shemer sacher. Huh? Why is being a shemer sacher considered doing a mitzvah? What do you mean? He's not Marsh a says two things here. A Shemar Veda or a Shemar Sacher. Oh, very good. Let's get Tom and Bayes on that. Let's get Tom and Bayes. The Gemara is going to ask that. Or, yeah, the Gemara is going to ask that. Uh, or similar to that. So anyway, so Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says that he's a Shemar Sacher. So he holds like Rabbi Yosef. And Rabbi Yezer holds that he's a, that he's a Shemar Chinam. So then he goes with Rabbi. Right, and then what it says, Lema the Rabbi Yosef Tanoi. Let's say that the whole din of Rabbi Yosef is a machlokes Tanoi. Loy b'shemer Aveda. The Gemara says Loy, meaning 
comes out that Rabbi Yosef's din is actually a machloikis tanoin. We don't usually like to do that, to have an amoira taking saying, taking sides of a machloikis tanoi. Right? So when it says like, why is it the din of Rabbi Yosef? It's straight. The machloikis rabbi and Rabbi Yosef is the machloikis to redeem Rabbi Yosef. Correct, but within, I mean, I think, I think it's Rabbi Yosef's taking sides. So is Rabbi. No, Rabbi, no. Rabbi has to say, the way Rashi says it, Rabbi has to say that it's a machloikis tonight. There's no two ways about it. Right? But Rabbi, Rabbi Yosef, right? Um, maybe Rabbi Yosef. just skipping the usual stage in the Gemara. Usually it would say, Leba Ketanai. And said, no, Rabbi could all like, uh, well, Rabbi Yosef like both. Right, so it's, it's really coming from the other. It's coming from the other angle, but but point is, is maybe we're looking that maybe Rabbi Yosef could fit his din into Rabbi Yosef, right? So again, Lema Rabbi Yosef Tanoi. So he says no. Loy b'shomer Aveda the kuli alma isim Rabbi Yosef. By a shomer Aveda, everybody holds like Rabbi Yosef that he's a shomer sofer, right? Not obviously not like Rabba, but like in in Rabbi We're talking about where the Malva needs the Mashkin. Right? What does that mean? He needs the Mashkin. It's not his. How can he use the Mashkin? So, so that Rashi says he's going to use the Mashkin and he's going to subtract it from from the loan. From the let's say let's say he uh, the Mashkin was a hammer and then the guy needs a hammer. So you find out how much does it cost to rent the hammer for a day. Then you subtract that from his loan. All right? But The guy did a mitzvah. He did a mitzvah because he lent somebody money. And he's he's, he's considered a shem mesacha. Because since he's doing a mitzvah, then he's isaac a mitzvah, potter a mitzvah. The guy's not doing a mitzvah. He's doing it for his own Hanah, and he's a Shemachinah. Right, so meaning, what, what, is the, what do you mean he's doing this Hanah? He's lending somebody money. Right, what does it mean he's doing it for his Hanah? Meaning, he's, well, I don't know exactly what the Hanah is, but if he was doing a mitzvah, why is he taking a mashkin? Right? He's t- because if he's taking a mashkin, that means he's nervous. Right? So, and he's saying that l'choyre, that's the mashkin is going to represent the loan. So, so therefore, he's not doing any any uh, uh, kreisa mitzvah. Right? So, mamela, therefore, he is not, he's not going to be, he's not going to be uh, potter. Right? So, he's a shamachinam. He's not, he's not really being Isaac in a mitzvah. Fine. Um, okay, so then the last line in the mission is a confusing line, um, which was that Abashal Aimer Mutala Adam Lihaskir Mashkone shall only we as Paikis Vahilus. Abashal said that a, a person, so he, you go, you, you lend somebody money. Now you know this guy doesn't have money. This guy lent you his hammer, he gave you his hammer as, as collateral. Now you realize that the way you can help this guy pay back his debt is by renting out the hammer, and you'll get say a dollar a day for the hammer, and then you rent it out for a hundred days, and he'll he'll have a hundred dollars, and then it will go towards paying the loan. So Abishol says that's like mamish like a like a shavas because you're gonna help the guy, you're gonna help the guy do this. Now that comes out that if a guy gives you a mashka in his car, so you could just rent that car out to the whole world. Right, so we had a hard time understanding that. So the Gemara says, Omar Abchanan, it's very limited. The case that you could do this is very limited. Omar Abchanan, Bar Ami, Omar Shmuel, Halacha Kabashol. The Halacha is like Kabashol, and you could do this. It's only, he only says it by a Mara, which is like a, a Ho, O Pasol, or a, what do you call a Pasol? Uh, an adzi, whatever that is. Adds, adds, whatever. A nicht. Right? Some sort of tool. A cardam and uh, and an axe. We Pile had that axe. before, an adds, A-D-Z. Yeah, yeah we had it's it like before. Half, half a pick. Yeah, it's a flat side of the picture. 
digging the earth, kind of like a hoe. A hoe, H O E. Right. Well, the other one was a hoe. Well, like, yeah, okay. You want to call it a hoe, but whatever. These kind of like it looked like it, but it's not a. It's, it's much. Yeah. Okay. Um. No, it's not. I don't know if it's enough competing one. Okay, whatever it is. These are what is the what are the what's the point of these tools? Hoyle benafish adrayu. Since you get a lot of rent for them, the zutur pipsayu, and they don't. It's very small. The depreciation is very small. Meaning, this is a very high, high. Uh, what do we call it in Asian Specialized. Nation? Specialized. No, I'm thinking it's a high. It's a low risk, high reward. That's what Lashon is saying. You have a high reward, low risk rental. Meaning, you get a lot of money, and the thing doesn't wear down. So, Mamela, you're gonna be. Uh, you're gonna be okay. Meaning you're not going to be costing. There's not too much risk on the lender's part. I'm sorry, on the borrower's part. Meaning you're not costing. You're not costing him much, so you can do a lot of good things for him. Yeah. Okay. Zog the Mishnah. Hamav rechavas makom lemakom So if a guy is is taking, you know, you tell the guy, do me a favor, take this barrel. Uh, you going to Lakewood? That's the right. Used to be anybody going to Brooklyn. Now is anybody going to Lakewood? Right, so you go to Lakewood, so you schlep a barrel to Lakewood. Yeah. So I'm and then it breaks. Whether you were doing this for free or whether you were getting paid, you shove You have to swear. We'll see in the Gemara exactly what it means, what type of shua, but you have to swear, and then you then you don't have to pay. Maybe the other Imer says that you shove They both have to swear, meaning he agrees with the Tanakhama. But he says, we, I, I hold that you have to do it, but I don't understand how you do it. Right? So again, they're, they're both agreeing that they have to make sure they just don't, just Rabbi Eliezer does not know how it's done. So we're going to be two, two ways to understand this mission. So, if somebody's... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. This means... That there's a standard way to watch it, and and let's say the, the way to watch is to put it in your trunk, and you pull up to the guy's house in Lakewood and it's broken. So if you did, that's the standards, and you don't, then you could make sure that you didn't do anything wrong. That's that would. What do you mean? If you if you yeah, well, we're gonna see the second shot in Ahmed Aleph. I don't know if we get to it tonight. Is that just the sure that you didn't do anything wrong? Uh -huh. Right, but according to here, it sounds like right now it seems like you got to make the shvua that you were in a peshe. Which, okay, it's it's new, it's it's nuanced exactly what the difference is between that. Hold on, look at the Gemara. Oh yeah, the Gemara says that you have to make a shvua that you didn't break it the kavana. Yeah. The meaning that you didn't mean. I never say I never say l'shem yichud. So. <laughs> and if you did, you may not. Uh, yeah, with our yen yen kavana, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So okay, we'll see. But right now, the heart it seems like it does the regular standard, uh, the regular standard shvuot. So so anyway, so then Torah about I'm average chavos lachaverim makom lemakom the shavra. Bein shemachina bein shtocha bein bein shemir. I'm sorry. That's Rameir, which fits in because it was a Stam Mishnah. And now Stam is Rameir. It's going to be dependent. If he's a Shemachinam, he swears. If he's a Nice Sachar, then he has to pay. Now we're going to see, oh, you know, the Gemara is going to go through what the sheet is on. Rabbi Yezer, I'm a Zeviz, Yeshava. Rabbi Yezer holds like Rameir that they both have to swear, but the Tmiani, Imichail and Zeviz, Yeshava. But it's a wonder to me. If they're if they're both allowed to even make a shvur, now we the Mishnah doesn't say how this thing broke. For whatever reason, the Gemara's assumption is that the way this barrel broke is the guy tripped. He tripped. It's not he didn't not nothing more nothing less. He just tripped and the barrel broke. That's for for whatever reason that is the that's the way the Mishnah understands. It. The Gemara asks. The mayor, the sovereign mayor, what are you trying to say? 
You said to say that a sober mayor nisko lav pesheyahu that a nisko tripping is not considered negligent, right? Because we're saying that our Mishnah says that he tripped. Again, it's not written in the Mishnah that he tripped. The Gemara is just assuming that he tripped. So we're saying that nisko is not a pesheyah, but because we're saying that all he has to do is swear and he's potter. But Tanya, we have a bride that says that he is considered a pesheyah. Nishbar akado. If somebody's own his own jug breaks. But like Silko, and he didn't pick it up. Nuf Lagamla or his camel fell down on Shusarabim. But like him, he didn't stand it up. So Rameir Mchayev Azekon. Rameir says he's Chayev and the damages. Why? Because he's a Peshaya. But Chachamim Rameir Potter Medine Adam. He's Potter from Dine Adam. The Chayev Dine Shemai, but he's Chayev Dine Shemai. Right now, what's a Pshat in the Machlokes? So Rameir holds that somebody who trips is Peshaya. And Rabbi the Chacham say he's not a Pesheya, but still he should he should I mean, to, to be yotzim in a shemayim, he should he should pay. The Kairul under the Nisko Pesheya plea, and we said that the, their whole machlok is in faith whether a guy tripped is a Pesheya. So you're saying that a mayor holds is a Pesheya, but our Mishnah says a mayor holds he's not a Pesheya because if he he tripped and he could just swear and he goes scot free. So Rabbi Lazar Tavra, it's Taka Stira Misha Shana Zula Shana the one who learned one brisa, the Mishnah in the name of Rameir, did not learn the other brisa in the name of meaning this Amachlaik is what Rameir said. So it's no stira. Okay. So now how do we understand the rest of the case, the rest of the sheet? This was Rabbi Yehuda Lamema, and Rabbi Yehuda came along to say, Shemrechinam, right, that a Shemrechinam is, is, uh, um, if Shamir Chinam is, he swears, right? Um, when a guy who's getting paid, he pays. Meaning each one in their standard dinam. The Shamir Chinam is, swears and he goes off free, and the, and the Shamir Sachar is not. So meaning, so if Yehuda holds it somewhere in the middle, Rashi says that. Uh, um, he's for sure tripping is not a pesheya. Um because even if it wasn't, if he didn't have a dinner pesheya, then he has to pay because Geneva and Aved, the Shama Sokhar has to pay. All right, so that's the way he's. So if you the saying that he, uh, somebody tripping is not a pesheya, but he's somewhere in the middle. Basar of Eliezer, the member, in, in, in Gemara Kiramayr. The Gemara is like Ramayr, meaning that we learn like Ramayr. But he says, I wonder if a Shamachinum and Shamasach are allowed to swear. Vishlam a Shamachinum, it's good. A Shamachinum, a Shtava, the Lai Pashava. He could swear that he wasn't a Pesheya. And a Shamasach, am I a Shtava? But a Shamasach, why is he swearing? Even if he swears that he wasn't a Pesheya, he still has to pay. Right? Because we said that it's like sort of Geneva and Aveda. And Geneva and Aveda, Shamasach has to pay. So what's he swearing for? And then, then he goes back to Shem Rechinam and says, Vafilu Shem Rechinam, Nami, and even a Shem Rechinam that's swearing that he wasn't a Peshe, a Hatti, not for Mokad Bidra. That's all good if where he was going down a hill when he tripped with the barrel. So Rashi says that's called Karav to an Ainus. He's Karav to an Ainus. If, he, if he's walking down a hill and he, and he breaks the barrel, he's Karav to an Ainus. Now, I'm assuming that that means he had to walk down the hill. But let's say he tried to take a shortcut, you know, down the hill instead of going all the way around, like in Harno, right? He decided he's going to take the steps instead of going around, all the way around. So maybe that, what may, may and then it fell. So does that mean he's not a Pesheya? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, whatever it is, the Gemara is saying, but even a Shemachinum, that's good if he's he's in Karib to an Ainus. If it's going downhill, Shalai Maka Midra and Mimati Mishnavadulai Pasha, but if it's if it's just on a flat land, can he make a shvur that he wasn't a pesheya? What's he tripping for? Again, it's hard to understand. I mean, mistakes happen. People trip. Right? The Gemara doesn't seem, at least according to Ramey and Rebbe Yeza, the Gemara is not taking into account that anybody should ever trip. And they didn't have Nike shoes back then either. You know, so <laughs> I don't I don't know. Like, <coughs> Yeah. On Tom and Aleph. But if you were Midra Nami, and even if he, even if he tripped, on a hill, that's it makes sense where there's a shvur where there's nobody that saw it. Right? So he swears and he's part of it. But if there's people that saw this, Nasi Raya then he has to bring a raya and then I'll be part of it. 
right? Swearing is not going to work. Meaning, if people are around, then he should he should have to bring them to say, well, we saw this guy and he was not a Peshaya. The Tanya, Isim and Yudah, Aimer, Ain Raya Shiva, Nay, Ain Raya Shwas Hashem, Tia Bench name. The, the Pasuk says there was nobody to see it and there's going to be a Shwas Hashem between them. Mashma, Ha Yesh Raya, if there was somebody to see it, Yavi Raya, the Yifta, then he should bring a Raya and then he'll be, and then he'll be Potter. Right? So, so that's that's what Rebeliezer's question is. How can they possibly make a shvua? Right? So that, uh, yeah, so that's the first pshat in the Gemara. Again, that the three-way machlaikis, it's not really a three-way machlaikis, it's Rameya Shita that holds that tripping is considered a Peshaya. Right? In, well, in our Mishnah, he's not a Peshe, I'm sorry. In the Gemara Bavakami, he's a Peshe. In our Mishnah, tripping is not a Peshe. If Yudha holds, he is not a Peshe, but he's he's somewhere in the middle. Right? So therefore, he has to make a Shur. Um And Rabbi Yezer says he doesn't understand. Um, I'm sorry, no. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yudha holds is a Shemachinam. If he's a Shemachinam, he just swears and finish. He's not a Peshe. Um, but if he's a Shemesacher, then he's it's like uh, Inus, and therefore it's like I'm sorry, it's like an Eben Aveda, and therefore he does have to, he would have to just pay. Sure, doesn't help. Eliezer doesn't understand how either one of them can get away, can get away with uh, with the Shur. Okay, tomorrow we have a second shot, which is just going to be a total repeat of of this Gemara. Yaakov, and also tomorrow we pull out volume three of Bam Metzia. Oh, tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow. Uh, um, yeah, okay. tomorrow we see him on the parrot. And, uh, yeah, and it's uh, good. Didn't, also, didn't finish the parrot this way. You kind of, our parrots gets back to back.